this guy. This guy is my friend. I have like affectionately like to call him the vomit rocket. Welcome to my box. This is CrossFit Sherwood Park. I've been coming here since the month of July. This is my new place to get a workout in. CrossFit has been everything that I've ever looked for in a workout regime. CrossFit is defined as constantly varied functional movements at high intensity. And the whole idea behind CrossFit is blending aspects of multiple sports together so that you eradicate weakness and it becomes the sport of fitness. It's just a whole package. It's agility and mobility, cardiovascular capacity, to blend in the importance of diet and of sleep. CrossFit is, except for today, always done in community. CrossFit is about balance and everything. Arguably the greatest CrossFit athlete of all time right now, Rich Froning, won four championships in a row, which to date has not been bested in men's or women's. And after that year of winning his fourth fittest man on earth championship, he quit. He let go. As a man of faith, he realized that he was making an idol out of CrossFit and his fitness. And in order to devote more time to his family, he quit the high intensity of training CrossFit full time to compete so that he could have more balance in his life. There's a lot that we can learn about CrossFit in our faith, but it should really be the other way around. Fulton Sheen once said that whatever the church drops, the world picks up. And you can see that in the whole community of CrossFit. This multi-dimensional exercise, the emphasis on nutrition, the emphasis on the need for community, doing this always together, all of these different elements that CrossFit puts together is really what our faith is intended to do. What's at the heart of the Jewish tradition is the Shema, which is their great prayer that they pray every morning and evening, and you already know what it is. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. And then Jesus picks up on it again in the New Testament. And I like it best in the Gospels of Math, Mark, and of Luke, because Jesus adds one element. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the whole person. Our heart is the place where decisions are made, that our soul is our whole being, who we are in relationship to God. Our mind is our ability to reason and to think, and our strength is that we are physical beings at work in this world. Christian life is a whole thing. The Christian life isn't just this spiritual part of your life and then you have everything else. It's not a part-time piece of your life. It is your life. It's everything that you are. We are intended to cultivate and to grow each and every aspect of our being in worship of God, in service to God. This is why if you go into the document that talks about priestly formation, it talks about human, intellectual, spiritual, and pastoral formation. When I was in seminary, they drilled this into us over and over again, and we got evaluated on those four areas every year. Because unless we have our mind, heart, soul, and strength directed towards God, then there's something that's gonna be holding us back from what God is trying to give to us. This is the idea of the whole person directed towards God. And this comes in in a really important way in two really hot button topic issues. You really wanna make your peers angry or your parents angry. Talk about palliative care or euthanasia and sex before marriage. But the teaching of the church on these two things comes back to this idea of the whole person. When it comes to euthanasia, what is of primary concern is the physical suffering of the person. And there's some credence given, some allowance given for the mental suffering as well. But what about the soul? What about the emotional well-being of that person? Are they doing this because they feel like they're a burden to their family? Is alleviating the physical suffering at all costs really going to be good for this person's soul and their relationship with God? Palliative care, which is what we are intended to offer these people in this difficult moment of their life, is caring for the whole person. The word palliative means to 
place a cloak over. It's to cover everything. And so when we talk about palliative care, it's not just the medical needs that they have, but it's the spiritual and the psychological and the community that they need around them. This is real palliative care that the Christian faith demands of us when someone we love is dying. I think of an experience from a few months ago in my own parish where a well-known member of the community was dying of cancer and the CWL from the parish, whom she had served with for many years, all took turns coming and spending time with her. That she was never alone in the hospital. She always had somebody there praying by her side so that when she woke up, there was somebody there with her. Everybody kept vigil at her bedside. One of the things that breaks my heart as a priest is when a family calls to come and have their loved one anointed and I show up at the hospital and I'm alone and it's just me and the dying person in their bed because the family is incapable or unwilling to spend that time to sacrifice other things in their life to be that community around them. And then a seemingly completely opposing topic of sex before marriage. The reason that the church teaches that this is necessary for couples is because in coming together in the marital act, couples are intended to bring their heart, mind, soul, and strength and offer it as a gift to their spouse. But when couples engage in sex before marriage, they're not capable of giving all of that in the sexual act. They're holding something back still. They require that gift of marriage, that commitment to one another, to be able to give that whole gift. That it's only in married life that we can aspire to give ourselves totally and completely to another person. One of the things that confounded me when I became a priest is encountering couples who had been together for years, sometimes a decade, living together, and then they finally take the step to be married. And within a year or two, they're divorced. Now, I'm not saying that I know the answer or the reason why that happens, but that couple has been together for so long, but the moment that that commitment comes in, the moment that what is asked of them is everything, then it becomes scary and they walk away because they don't feel like they can do it. A couple is intended to come together towards marriage to say, yes, I want to give my whole self and then live it, not practice it before they're willing to commit to it. So if you look at your own life and your own relationship with God and your growth in the Christian life, what part needs to grow in you. Because when it comes to CrossFit, part of the strategy is to work on weaknesses, to eradicate weaknesses so that you can do everything equally well, that you never over excel at one to the detriment of another. And so in our Christian life, is there something that you excel at to the detriment of another part of your life? When it comes to these different aspects of your whole being directed towards God, what needs the most work? Is there too much emphasis in your life on the heart? Do you have a really emotional relationship with God where one day you're angry at him, the next day you're happy, and then you're sad, and then you're doubting? You're all over the place. Well, maybe there's some maturity that needs to grow in your emotional relationship with God or in the spiritual. Is your relationship to God simply spiritual? Does it include how you live your life? Or are you the kind of person that is devout in prayer and then chastises the person who cuts you off in the church parking lot after mass? Or the mind? Do you struggle to wrap your head around and to have that understanding of faith that allows you to strive deeper into the mysteries of God? Are you willing to pick up some devotional book that will give you a deeper understanding of prayer, of who Jesus is, and what God desires for you in your life? Or is it strength? Is it the physical discipline of what you're trying to achieve in your Christian life? We just passed Lent. How hard was it to keep on your Lenten penance? Was that a challenge for you to be able to do that one simple thing that you needed to punish your body for? This is the Christian life. It's the whole person. And we can't leave any peace behind because God wants all of us. He has loved us with everything that he is. He gave us his son who gave his entire life for our sake. And his invitation back to us is, will you love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength?